Well, hey, thanks for uh, turning into my video. Uh, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of my roof build here on my 2003 Coleman Utah. Um, I did have water damage that was affected by these roof rails. Um, the previous owner, I see that where they had done some caulking and so forth around the rails and other areas. A couple of spots that looked like they had hail damage. Um, but the main damage was definitely from the leaking underneath the rails. And my understanding is uh, that it's a common issue with uh, the rails. And uh, a couple other spots I noticed there on the roof. As we walk into the camper, you can see the, the damage started actually peeling it back to kind of get what the essence of here was. And quite an extensive part of water damage in here. Matter of fact, um, when I was pulling this apart, I think it already set for about uh, a week or so, and this still was a little damp, but definitely rotted wood uh, up in there and needed to get that out. And had canvas damage as well, stains on the can canvas, um, mildew and mold stains, so I had to get that out of there. Then actually ordered a Beer Creek canvas. Here we are, we've moved the campus, uh, canvas and getting ready to uh, take the roof off. But I also wanted to give you a little bit more in-depth here of after pulled away a little layer of wood here to give you what it's looked like. It's actually a sandwich sandwich design please, between plywood, um, insulation, and then another layer of plywood. Um, you also have support beams go across. We got the roof off. Um, as you can see, my Bear Creek canvas back there too. But uh, basically it took us four guys to kind of lift this thing up and turn it over. And when you're removing all the items, such as the beams and screws, and I suggest that you mark them and label them where they belong for you when you do the rebuild. You can see I've done that on some of the beams. And here you can see where I've taken out the support beams. And I want to kind of show you the close-up of the seam I mentioned earlier that is underneath the railing, the roof rack rail on the top. And you can see down here where that seam is and where the water damage came in. And i got to get all that out of there, that rotted wood. Here I've got all that rotted wood out of there. And you can see the good wood that's left. But I did take the rest of it out. I wanted to do it all right. So I took it out using a couple different tools. And you can see the adhesive were left over there. And to get that off, I used some adhesive remover. And then the final cleaning, to clean everything off, I used some mineral spirits. But that uh, adhesive remover uh, is very important to use to get that stuff off because it's very sticky. So what I wanted to do in this part of the video was share with you the tools I used to separate and rip off the plywood from the aluminum shell in the camper. First tool is my uh, is a scraper. What's nice about it, it is very, uh, it's, it's very sturdy. It's got a full tang all the way through the handle, which allows you to hammer uh, and beat down on the handle. Um, it does have a beveled edge, allowing you to get underneath the surfaces. Uh, I, I also use a simple spackling uh, knife to get up underneath the wood, which uh, was good as well. Um, what I would sometimes do is get this started and then utilize this one to, to get a little more deeper into the wood. Um, the other tool which I used very regularly um, and did a great job is this multi-purpose tool which comes with different blades and so forth you can attach to it. The two that I used on this project was this square uh, straight off uh, edge cutting tool um, and the rounded cutting tool. This is the foam insulation board that you need to uh, coat with uh, some glue. And the reason for that is so when you spray the adhesive on, uh, it doesn't eat into the uh, insulation. And the glue that I use is called the Bender's 504 Carpenter's Glue. And um, basically you put it on an application like you do paint. So I just basically got a roller and rolled it on top of it um, and rolled the, all of the insulation boards that we would have. And then I marked them and cut them down to size to where they would fit inside. And I'm going to believe there was, I needed three or four pieces of the, of the boards. The contact cement is uh, that all of this you use to 
connect contact to your uh, aluminum roof is the Bender's 618 contact cement. You do got to make sure you get it really, really clean. Um, and it took a lot of time to make sure that is and get it all prepped. Um, you do spray application. So make sure you prep everything else because you will be spraying. So I cover up the, uh, the side walls there so I wouldn't spray up on the sides with this. And it's sprayed on by a pressure pot application, um, which is uh, a large pod that utilizes air uh, um, and compresses it into a pot, like a, you know, a cooking pot you would cook at home with. Um, and then it pushes the, the application uh, adhesive out through the gun. And you need to have about good solid 90 PSI at the gun. So it does take a good solid air compressor to do this. Your little pancake air compressor won't hold the job. Uh, I tried, it didn't work. Practice uh, before you do the, new app, the, the first application. Make sure you get the right um, spread. Um, this is the wood that we use to do the base layer, which is a one quarter inch uh, plywood that we got up at Home Depot. And I list this all out at the end. Here you can see the insulation laid in along with the support beams that were all placed in and uh, used the contact cement to uh, go on top of that. And this is the next layer, which is I use some paneling. I thought it looked kind of good, give a nice light airy beachy feel um, here's the, the finished product I got it in um, that I um, once I got all of the support beams insulation in I just use liquid nail to uh, uh, adhere the paneling so I basically spread that all along the inside um, um, on the insulation on the support beams and then I put that down and I did uh, some heavy bricks on top so you let it sit for a good week from a ceiling before you put it back on. Now I'm, I've got the roof back on. I've flipped it over. And you can see where the water damage is. And this is underneath the roof rail. I took the roof rail off. And you can see this is the, uh, the stuff they had underneath. Um, definitely didn't do its job. Um, they didn't seal the screw holes very well either. And over time it kind of just brought it away. So again, got to make sure you clean. It comes up pretty easy with the uh, the razor. Um, you could probably use some solvent. I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to really rip the paint off of the roof. But um, once I got it off with that, I used the mineral spirits, scrubbed it down really good, got it nice and clean um, for the application of the uh, Etherbond tape. And I used a double-sided tape uh, on here to lay over this crack and seam all the way down. I used the two inch um, Etherbond double sided stick uh, tape. Uh, I used uh, that is a, a 50 foot roll. Um, it's about 25 uh, about 15 feet on each one and I used that underneath the rails and then I got the uh, four inch white uh, Etherbond tape to use on the um, end caps. After I put all that on, uh, I'm going to be using the Cool Seal RV roofing application um, to coat the whole roof. And here's a picture of it uh, all coated up, ready to go camping. Though I am going to finish it up by painting the rails all white so it's going to look all seamless. And get that all done, put the AC on, and we'll be ready to go. Um, here's the camper with the new Bear Creek canvas, which fit perfectly they did an awesome job highly recommend them um, went on very easily and fit really good so here's a picture of it uh, out in our maiden voyage if you will uh, after being fully uh, done and repaired um, it actually did rain that weekend and no leaks it was fantastic really excited about it so here's a here's a list of all the materials that we used um, both for cleaning um, the interior and exterior, um, what we used for the exterior uh, ceiling there um, to seal it. And this is all the materials that we use for the internal side. So your base layer includes plywood, the middle layer, um, the glue and the contact cement, and the finish layer, which is basically wall paneling. 
Well, hey, thanks for watching the video. I came out to the storage unit today to pop it up so you guys can take a look at it. Still doing some work on some other parts of it, but the roof is done. I want to give you a glimpse of it here uh, in the inside. Take it out, look. Now we've got it all finished. Have gone camping, and uh, we definitely did not have any any leaks, which was fantastic. I've still got the door hanging up, but gives you a nice, good glimpse of what it's like on the inside. And then Bear Creek canvas, fantastic as well. All right, there you have it. That's the video. Thanks very much. I'll uh, be glad to answer questions if you got them.